Morning, Mr. Whittingdale. Good morning. Can you really successfully regulate the press after last night's revelations? Uh, I've made a statement. I've nothing further to add. John Whittingdale, the man whose job it is to oversee the media, is today facing what he admits is some rather embarrassing media attention. The heart of the story is his relationship with a woman who turned out to have been a sex worker, a dominatrix with her own dungeon. What's fascinated many is the fact that it didn't appear in the papers. Might it have anything to do with the fact that he was responsible for press regulation? Labour today said that responsibility had been compromised. I think it would be better for him and better for the government if somebody else were making those decisions. And I think that is a simple point that I'm making, that there can't be any perception of undue influence. And I think that at the moment, the way things stand, there is that perception. And I think he should step back from making these decisions. So why wasn't the story run? First, there were qualms about the public interest in exposing what is a single man's private life. And secondly, this ended before he became culture secretary. In his statement, he says, at no time did she give me any indication of her real occupation, and I only discovered this when I was made aware that someone was trying to sell a story about me to tabloid newspapers. As soon as I discovered, I ended the relationship. What you're seeing here is the self-evidence that self-regulation works. This was a single man. He was not at the time a government minister who was dating a single woman who he had no idea was a sex worker. So on the way the world has moved on, where is the justification for the intrusion into his privacy? However, those seeking reform of the press say there are questions. The relationship ended because he had heard someone was making approaches to the press. And then a year later, he was appointed culture secretary and wielding a crucial power to sign into law a change to libel costs that would underpin the whole royal charter on press regulation. In October, he then told editors he wouldn't, for the time being, sign that law. In the same month, a journalist at The Independent says his story was spiked. Press campaigners wonder if this caution is a coincidence. Given that he has powers over the libel law, and to initiate the long-delayed second part of the Leveson press inquiry. What we want John Whittingdale to do is to ensure the government keeps the promises made by the Prime Minister to deliver Leveson part two, looking at the cover-up, and the legislation, deliver the legislation that's already been passed that makes Leveson work. So this is essentially a tale about campaigners for privacy, wondering why the press decided to keep this story private. David Silito, BBC News.